Hi there, this lesson is adding component vectors, part of the A-level mechanics. So let's have a look. So the objectives for this short lesson are to understand the differences between scalars and vectors, and to recall different vectors and scalars by name, and to be able to add together component vectors. So vectors and scalars. All physical quantities. So, two examples might be speed and force, are described by a magnitude and a unit. A magnitude is just a posh word for size, so size and unit. Vectors must also have direction specified. That's the difference. So, some examples are displacement, velocity, acceleration, and force. Scalars, they don't have direction, they just have magnitude and a unit. And some examples are distance, speed, mass, work, and energy. Remember at any point, if you wish to pause, you can make some notes, or you can practice writing them down, and then see if you can remember them. So let's have a look at this. If you want to sketch this and then attempt it, just pause the video. So let's have a look. So energy, scalar, or vector. Energy doesn't have direction, so that would be a scalar. Length, also a scalar. Temperature, a scalar. Mass, is also a scalar. Weight, now weight is a vector. Weight is, the, is what occurs when you have mass in a gravitational field. So from GCSE, that would be weight is mg. G being the gravitational field strength on Earth, which is 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Area, that's just length times length, so that would be a scalar as well. Speed is a scalar quantity. Volume is also a scalar quantity. Time, a bit of confusion with this one, whether it could be a vector because you could go forward in time or backwards in time, but it's a scalar. Velocity is a vector. Velocity is speed with direction, which makes it a vector. And acceleration is also a vector as well. So the direction for acceleration is obviously important. If you're sat in a car with some, some lights and you accelerate in the wrong direction, you can cause a crash. So acceleration is definitely a vector. Another notable one might be momentum. Momentum is a vector as well. Let's have a look then, let's move on. So displacement is a vector quantity that describes the distance moved in a particular direction. So let's just look at this one in particular. So if I continued this, say I went, took a path like this. The distance travelled may be, I don't know, 25 metres. But what we've done is gone back to our starting position. So the displacement, displacement is... You know, the distance in a straight line from where you start to where you end. And we've ended up back where we started. So the displacement S is actually zero metres in this case. Displacement is a vector quantity. Let's have a look then. So how do we represent vectors? So some of you will have covered this at GCC. An arrow. A straight line is used. So there's an example, 50, uh, 50 metres displacement to the east, or to the right, or you can give a, a direction using an angle. So the arrow indicates the direction and the length of the line is proportional to the magnitude, although that's not always important, especially if you're doing calculations, and most of the vectors questions in A-level physics, you will be doing the calculation. So that might be another example. So displacement at 25 metres, 45 degrees north of east, or you can do... You know, you could use a, you could go from the vertical, which would also be 45 degrees in this instance. Addition of vectors, quite intuitive this, pretty straightforward. So obviously a 4 and a 6 to the right, I'm sure you can guess what that is, 10 newtons. Note it says resultant. So the original vectors are called components. These, these are the component vectors. 
and the final vector after you've added them together, they're called the resultant vectors. So this one, quite intuitive as well. So six newtons to the right and four newtons to the left would give a resultant of two newtons to the right. So again, these are the component vectors. The final one is the resultant. So what about two vectors acting at an angle? So you'll probably get, have to deal with things like this, questions like this in your exam. So what I would do is, is redraw this. So what we can say is that this is the, the tail of the vector and this is the nose. And for the 4 newton one, this is the tail and this is the nose. So the idea is to redraw it. So it actually goes tail to nose, tail to nose like this. Then the resultant, intuitive as you may have guessed, or if you've done this before at GCSE, is to simply connect them to make a triangle. To get the magnitude of the resultant vector, we just use Pythagoras. And for the direction, we can use trigonometry. So we'll do some examples. So this one says, by scale drawing and calculation, find the resultant force acting on an object in the situation below. You should also determine the direction of this force. So I'm going to show you how to do this. After I've done it, if you want to do it again, feel free. So first of all, the we'll look at the scale drawing momentarily. I'll explain how to do that. But the via calculation, it's pretty straightforward. So if this was me, I would redraw it, tail to nose, tail to nose. So I could have... 6 newtons that way, and 4 newtons down. What we can do then is get the resultant. So the resultant, if that triangle moved by the way, that's because it went off and I've just redrawn it. But well, never mind. So this resultant would be Pythagoras. So Pythagoras pretty straightforward. So it would be, the magnitude of this would be 6 squared plus 4 squared, square root. So if you pop that into your calculator, we would get 36 plus 16, square root. Which, if you pop into your calculator, gives you 7.2 newtons. So the resultant of the 6 and 4 newton vector acting at right angles to each other is 7.2 newtons. So what I will do is just explain how scale drawing would work. So you would come up with some kind of scale. For 6 and 4 newton, it's pretty straightforward because you could just draw a... If you draw a 6 newton... Sorry, 6 centimetre line to represent 6 newtons. So I'll just put centimetres. And another 4 centimetre line, like this. And you actually measured that with a ruler. You would get 7.2 centimetres if you draw it accurately. So if you want to try that, please feel free to do so. And obviously for our scale, our scale was, you know, one centimetre represents one newton. So that's another way, scale drawing. You will find yourself doing calculation, to be honest, and you'll see that when we start doing some questions. So let's just have a look at, at the angle. So we did the six and the four. Six newton and the four newton. The angle, we might find this one. And um, we just use trigonometry, which you should know from GCC maths. I'll just do an example, just in case. So this will be opposite. This will be adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, if you use your trigonometric formulas, would be tan of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 4 over 6. Then we just need to do the inverse tan. So the angle theta would be the inverse tan of four over six. Now please make sure that you, if you do this in your exam, that you use the correct notation, the tan to the minus one, four over six. Exam reports state, you know, that some students aren't doing that. So it's just best practice. So tan minus one, four over six would be 33.7. So 34 degrees. 
would be fine. Hopefully that's okay. All right, let's move on. So here's a question. If you want to have a go at this question, pause the video, feel free to have a go, and then I'll show you how to do it. So a raindrop falls at a constant velocity of 1.8 meters per second. If a horizontal wind of 1.4 meters per second is blowing, calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant velocity of the raindrop by a scale diagram and by calculation. I'm going to show you the calculation and then you just follow the, the previous example to do the scale drawing. So we've got 1.4 meters per second to the right and 1.8 meters per second down. So we're going to draw this tail to nose. So, tail to nose. It would look like that. And then there's a horizontal wind this way. So we've got 1.8 meters per second going down and 1.4 meters per second to the right. Then we just need to do the Pythagoras and the trigonometry. So I'll just do that now. So, Pythagoras is C squared is A squared plus B squared. So 1.8 squared plus 1.4 squared and then square rooted. Put that into calculator. Would give you 2.28. 2.28 meters per second. I'm going to give the answer of it as 2.3 meters per second. So that's two significant figures. You're given two significant figures in the question. So good practice would be to give your answer to the same amount of significant figures as the information that's given to you in the question. Then we just need to do the angle. So I'll do this angle, angle theta. You could call the angle x if you wish, but I like to use theta for angle. So again, we've got the opposite and the adjacent. So tan theta is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. So 1.4 divided by 1.8. So we should do tan minus one. So theta is equal to 10 minus 1, 1.4 divided by 1.8. Put that into calculator, give you 38 degrees. Now you can do that doing the scale diagram if you wish. So just use a ruler. And if you've got a protractor, you can also measure the angle. And you will get the, as long as your diagram is correct, you will get the exact same answers. Let's move on. So, quick question, just to check your learning. If you want to have a go, just pause it. So, state what is meant by a scalar quantity. It's just a quantity that has magnitude only. Two examples can be any of the examples which we discussed earlier. So, just a random two, might be energy and temperature. And then we'll finish with this question. So if you'd like to have a go at it, just pause the video, have a go, and then I'll take you through the answer. So an object is acted upon by two forces at right angles to each other. One of the forces has a magnitude of 5 newtons, and the resultant force produced on the object is 9.5 newtons. Determine the magnitude of the other force. So you've got to be careful with this question. And the being careful means looking at the, the information properly. So an object is acting on by two forces at right angles to each other. One of the forces is a magnitude of five newtons. And the resultant force is 9.5. So we can draw a triangle. And the resultant force is 9.5. So that's got to be the hypotenuse. One of the other forces is five newtons. So... Either the horizontal or vertical line can be the 5 newton force. We're just finding the other one. So I'll call this one the 5 newton. We need to find this one. So what is this force? So it's Pythagoras again. But this time we're finding a component instead of the resultant. So that would be 9.5 squared. Subtract 5 squared. And then square root. And then if you put that in your calculator, you'll get the other force F to be 8.1 newtons. 8.1 newtons. Okay. 
Then it just wants the angle between the resultant force and the 5 newton force. So the resultant force is the 9.5 and the 5 newton force is there, so this angle. So I'll call that theta. And this time we've got the hypotenuse and adjacent. So we're going to do some trigonometry again. So A and H, so that's cos or cosine. So cosine theta is equal to A divided by H. So that would be 5 over 9.5. So theta, if we're writing it correctly, will be equal to inverse cos of 5 over 9.5. Pop that into your calculator, see what you get. And we get 58 degrees. Note that everything's the two significant figures. So my answer here, the 8.1 newtons and the 58 degrees, both the two significant figures, because all of our data is given to two significant figures. So I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.